Now, any time that we do any of these wild game recipes and you don't happen to have quail or rabbit, well, you can switch it out. You can find domesticated rabbit fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And if you use quail, you can use chicken, you can use little Cornish hens. You yeah. can switch a lot of stuff out. But if you do happen to have wild game, each little thing has its own particular taste. Right. And you can do things to help with that seasoning to bring that taste mm -hmm. out and make it even better. Growing up as a kid in rural Mason and Carter counties, I was surrounded by, I always looked for the old timers who were yeah. out there, had their old double barrel side-by-side -side shotgun and you know, were still bringing food home to the table. A lot of these old fellows were from the Depression era where they were sent out with a shotgun shell or two and expected to bring home game for the table. Right, that's dinner. Now you can imagine during these times there probably wasn't that many deer around because the deer population was already depleted due to nobody was policing that. There mm -hmm. weren't really game wardens way back in that time. They started about that period of time. But once everything came back, we had this bounty of game around us. Now one of the things that, that we're working on, Department of Fish and Wildlife is trying to bring quail back. That's tough. Is it? Because of habitat. You know, everybody keeps a clean fence roll nowadays mm -hmm. and everybody keeps their yards clean and it's tough. But that doesn't make the taste of quail any less wonderful. That's right. They're delish. So, being that the numbers of quail are down and hopefully on their way back, I think it was about 2008 or 9, somewhere around in there, I was down south quail hunting. And I remember having a recipe down there. And you know, when you use a, a, a cast iron, when you use a Dutch oven to cook quail or Cornish hens or anything, any kind of bird, it's really kind of hard. You really got to put the heat on top to really brown that up. Right. So there's a fellow down there, and I think he's from Canada, but his name is Hugh Atchison. And what he recommended doing was putting the brown on, mm -hmm. putting the braise on first. So you have that. And so this was an idea. And you learn a lot of stuff from a lot of different people over yeah. the years in bear camp and deer camp. So today, We've got a surprise recipe in the evening. But first of all, let's get this little dish going here. And again, the important thing is to get the brown on first. So here's where we're going to start, Mrs. Farm. We're going to take okay. our little quail. Now, I didn't clean these. If I had cleaned them, I would have not split the breast open. And see, they're kind of pulled apart here. Right. See how that, that oh, yeah. I wouldn't normally do that. I would want to leave the skin on and the breast open. But being that we have some twine and we can kind of keep things together, let's take these onions okay. and cut them up long ways into like four quarters. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is salt and pepper our little guys. You know, I remember when I was a kid, the sound of a Bob White quail was ubiquitous. Everywhere you went, you would hear them. <whistles> Everywhere, all the time. And I would call them in. I had this little pattern, and I would listen to them, and I would, I would hear a male. So I would wait 10, 12 seconds, and I would call again. I would do the same thing he was doing. He'd get closer and closer and closer. Next thing you know, you see one come out of the field. There's see dinner. how I did that? <laughs> yeah, that was Can good. You walk like a crow? No, I can't. You do that well. No, I didn't shoot him. That would have been illegal, because that was in the spring. So what we're going to do is just we're going to take these and we're going to brown them. I'm going to put them in some hot oil. All right. There's a little bit of pre-cooking going on here too. So people might ask, so how do you adjust your temperature when you're cooking over an open flame? You move your pan around where it's the hottest or coolest. If you want to get more temperature on it, you pull it up right where the flame is the highest. If you want to back off a little bit, you slide it back. It's that simple. Normally, you could do this all in one dish. Mm -hmm. And we had a nice fire going just to kind of keep warm because it's going to get chilly out here. And I wanted to see the open pan. You could do it this way. You can use two pans. I don't mind cleaning two pans. Those look like you could eat them now. They look good. Oh, they do. They're not quite <laughs> done yet. We're going to finish them up. All righty. Now let's dress their little selves out. So we're going to take this onion. Kind of stuff it in, in there. Here. Like that? Yep. Now we're going to tie his little legs up. That's just to hold him together and keep all that flavor in. Keep right. the onion in there. He's done. And again, our idea here, now see those have kind of sealed up. 
We want that chest cavity to stay together as much as we can. They look cute. Gotta do that. They, do, they, look, they cute. look cute. All right, so we're going to take some dates and we're going to pit them. Okay. And we're just going to cut those up into six or seven pieces. We're going to have these on standby. Now, you could use cranberries. I normally would use cranberries. But, but these are yummy. These are good for you. How do you want these cut? Just in fours? Yeah, just in, I don't know, five or six pieces. Okay. That's going to give it a little sweet, isn't it? It's going to give it a little sweet. I like that. All right, there's your dates. All right, now let's take our leeks. We're not going to waste those onions either. All right. Now leeks have a nice mild taste. They're not, they're not, they're oniony, but they're not strong. And these really complement this a lot. A lot of people use leeks when they're making quail. You want to cut these up a little bit finer. All right. So I have leeks, we got onions, and we have dates. It's date night. Oh, that's sweet. And we're going to drop these leeks and the rest of these onions. Now remember that our little quail were in here and all those little pieces and all that fat from their skin is flavoring these as well. I'm going to take these over here in just a minute. Once they soften up just a little bit more, they absorb all the flavor that's in this pan. I'm going to take them over to my Dutch oven. And it's 350 degrees, which is? 17 and 8. 17 and 8, correct. Now I guess this is a good time to tell you about our sister page. If you want to come over and see Cast Iron Cooking with Tim Farmer. Now this is mainly a discussion page. So the discussion is going to be y'all, and I want recipes, we're going to post our recipes, but uh, we have a lot of folks signing up over there. It's our sister page. And also let's remind you, if you have not become a member of Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page, what would you do Mr. Farmer? I'd hit like. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's all you too do. Easy. Okay, we're going to take a cup of chicken broth. And we recently got some apple cider. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of apple cider and put it in there. I'm gonna take my leeks off the fire. I wish you could smell these onions and leeks right now. It's they ridiculous. They smell amazing. Isn't that something? Yes. That's all. You can't go wrong with that. So we're gonna cover this up and let it get, let that cook down just a little bit. Then I'm gonna drop in my bouquet garni. All right, now our carrots. Mm -hmm. When Natalie was little, <laughs> our granddaughter, she would not eat carrots. That's right. But she would eat karoots. Because you made that up. <laughs> what's what's karoots, Papa? Oh, it's this wonderful thing that you just got to try. Just try one bite. Right. Oh, Grandpa, those are good. Well, how couldn't they be? This is, a, <laughs> this is I just, one time I think we were having liver, then we had duck. They mm -hmm. really, really accessorized. Right some wild game mm -hmm. and, and a lot to, and tonight's that kind of deal. We just take carrots and we boil them. Mm -hmm. And butter. Mm -hmm. Some brown sugar. Our maple syrup. That we made, that's right. That's karoots. That's karoots and let it cook together. How can you go wrong? That's a karoot. <laughs> boil your, boil your uh, uh, carrots ahead of time because uh -huh. Because when you, when you get everything coming together like this, mm -hmm. you don't want to sit around and wait. That's right. the great thing about cooking outside, is you're, we're always mentally prepared to have everything come together at once. Right. Because if you got your main dish ready and you're waiting on your sides and they're gonna be a half hour, you got trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, we were up in Shenandoah, mm -hmm. Virginia recently. I was scouting out that beautiful river up there for a smallmouth trip this spring. Plus we went, wanted to go up around the capital and see right. some stuff. And this was our gift. From the place we stayed. From the place we stayed. That tastes pretty good. Have you tried it? That's good stuff. They got some nice orchards up there and vineyards. Beautiful, beautiful part of the country. Yeah, they do. But you know what? It put me in the reflective mode when we were up there sitting on the back porch and thinking about the old days. And You know, you think about how, as we're cooking our quail over here, some of the old timers, that's the way they got their protein. In that's our right. lifetimes. And, and, and you think about just a generation or two back. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Dad, when I was a kid, we would go out to the country and visit folks that, that you know, didn't have much money. Mm -hmm. He was a preacher. And I remember traveling way back, way back to places that didn't have electricity, running water, they had the old pump, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I remember the, the smell of a, of a coal oil lantern. And those kids, when they came to school on the bus, you knew who didn't have electricity because right. they, they smelled is, like coal yeah. oil, which was, you know, and those kids were as happy as we were. You know? Yeah. Can you imagine growing up like that? I would enjoy that. It's not all bad. No, I'd enjoy it. 
Love the old days. But when I started thinking back, I started thinking about quail hunting and I started thinking about Katie. Mm -hmm. Remember sweet Katie, yeah. our English partner? Oh, I loved her. There was nobody like her. And when we lost her, it was hard. Right. But you know what? It started to make me think about a little story that I read not too long ago. Let's, let's talk about losing a friend, mm -hmm. your best friend sometimes. Right. And this is called Old Tom. The vet told him that the old setter might live another day or so and that the humane thing to do would be to put him down. The old man brushed his mustache with the back of his hand so that his fingers would cover up his eyes. And he said he didn't believe he was ready to do without old Tom right now, and maybe in a day or so, but not right now. So the two of them shuffled out of the car and drove off together. Now the old man had a problem. It was the middle of March and bird season was long since closed. But more than he'd ever wanted anything in his life, he wanted the dog to hear one more shot and feel the whir of one more flush. In March or no, the old man took a vigil near the swamp that night and marked down two or three birds as they came into roost. And promptly at six the next morning, the two gentlemen marched down together through the morning mist as they had done countless times before. Come on, that. Come on, that. One of them hoped they would do countless times again in some other fields. The play was faultless. Old Tom drew himself up as proud as a puppy. The old man's shot was as true as the youngsters, and the deed was done. At the vet's a half hour later, his last bird cradled between his front feet, his nostrils filled with the scent of what he had lived for, old Tom went to sleep. The old man lets him rest up on a hillside facing the western sun. Old folks appreciate the late afternoon warmth. And on the slate that marks the spot, he scratched Old Tom, a faithful friend for 12 fine years. On fair days, when he thinks no one's watching, the old man goes up to the slate on the hillside and sits in the sun with a glass of whiskey and talks about times past with Old Tom. All right, here's our reveal. Oh, wow. Oh, me? Do you smell that. That looks amazing. Now, our little bouquet garni, which is a fancy way for saying a bunch of weeds tied together. Yeah. <laughs> you smell that thyme. You oh, smell wow. that thyme coming out of there. This is what the finished product looked like. Now, aren't you glad we browned that in that skillet? Yeah, they look wonderful. Isn't that beautiful? Let's eat. All right, first, let's take a bite of our. Wow. <laughs> Mmm, that's so good. Look at that leaking. Those are good. I love leeks. They're wonderful. A little bit of rice. You can have a karoot. That is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, it's indescribable. It's subtle. That's but the good. flavor that each animal has. I'm gonna have a karoot. Now something you do to your rice, which mm -hmm. I like. For texture, you put some almond slivers I in did. there. I did. I put like a lot. That. Yeah, I put some carrots and celery today. Sometimes we put, put cranberries. cranberries yeah. We put them in there. I love Sounds these good. leeks. You know, there's hardly any food in the world that I won't try. I remember when That's I was true. riding around here doing some work on the farm, and a little song was going through my head. I was writing for Country Kitchen. Yeah. 
And uh, the whole concept of this thing came to me. And one thing that never sounded too appealing was chicken feet. Because mm -hmm. as they say, you are what you eat, and I don't want to be thought of as chicken feet. That's right. But not too long ago, we went to the stockyards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sat down and met a bunch of people, and somebody was, they said they could sing every word of the right. song, somebody's daughter. <laughs> this guy comes up and he says, my wife fixed chicken feet. I said, does not. Yeah. Now I know that, that in a lot of Asian recipes they have them, mm -hmm. but I know where those feet have been. Yeah. Around other chickens. You'll try them, won't Yeah. No, no, no. But he said, my wife is from the Dominican Republic, and she makes those. I thought, does not. He says, does so. <laughs> I said, does not. I said, does so. Mm -hmm. That went on for an hour and a half. That's right. Two hours later. I found said, prove it. <laughs> so guess what? She's you want to try some on. chicken feet? I will watch you try it. How's that? <laughs> I'll try it. I know Doesn't you will. mean I'm going to eat them every day, but That's I'm going right. to try it. Let's go. Let's go up to the cabin and see what we got. All right, we moved from the wagon. We cooked our quail to the cabin, and here's Clara. <laughs> How you doing, Clara? Good. What do now, I do? I knew I'm doing good. I knew this day would come. They say you are what you eat. Yes. So I don't eat chicken feet. It just rhymed. <laughs> I didn't say I wouldn't eat them. And you know what? When I met your husband, mm -hmm. and we were at the stockyards, and I met your husband, he says, you know, my wife was a little bit offended. You know, you said you wouldn't eat chicken feet. I said, no. That, how does she cook them? And then he starts telling me about cilantro <laughs> and peppers and all this wonderful oregano. I thought, bring it on. I'll try them. I'm not changing my song, though. No, okay. Because it rhymes. <laughs> you sure? You should change But Clara, tell me, how do you begin? Okay, now I saw you... Okay, this is what your average chicken foot looks like. He's got, he's got toenails, so on and so forth. You clean those up. You cut those off. Yes. And what's the next step after you cut the? Okay, I'm gonna wash it. I got only ten here, so I don't need too much, because then they get so dry. What is your water? I need water? water. Yeah. Let me just pour some in there. Yeah. Water and vinegar. Yeah. So you, I'm starting your husband and you. There's, there's kind of a base to a lot of recipes, and you said it was. And what did you call it again? Uh, garlic. Sofrito. Oh, sofrito. Sofrito, which yeah. is garlic, cilantro, yeah. and I uh, use bell pepper. And bell pepper. Yeah. So that's kind of your trinity. This is exactly. kind of your. That's Dominican thing. Like we use that for everything. No kidding. Yes. So that's the, when I take a whiff of this cooking. When I smell this, kind of that's that's going to be the Dominican base for a lot yeah. of things. I like it. Okay. You see. And then I um I use oregano, a little bit of um, black pepper. Black pepper? Yeah. For my sofrito, I also use some salt. Okay. And what else? Yeah, that's it. Oh, that smells good. Yeah, that's sofrito. Oh, I need a little bit of water, right? Cause, a little um, bit of water in yeah. here? Yeah. You tell me when. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, I think it's enough. Okay. Yeah, here. Put that on there. That's Nikki's fancy smancy plastic chopper. There you go. Isn't that Where you got this from? You need one of those. I think I need one of those. Okay, I think it's fine. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. Let me set it here. You see, like, don't say how to eat the mulches. There is enough, right? Just a little bit, not too much. Yeah, adobo. It's a uh, Sazon Goya. That helps with the color. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you smell this? Or yes. It? Yeah, that's a sofrito. Oh, man. Okay. Canola oil. Yeah. We use oil and a little, little bit of um, white sugar. Okay, it's going to burn a little bit, so that I want to use that for the color. Good. So you put those in a hot skillet. So who taught you how to make this? Your grandmother? Yeah. My grandmother, my mom. Yeah. Will you mind to just lower a little bit? Lower the fire? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Now I want to use this. So like that? Yeah. Now those, they're kind of swelling up. Mm-hmm. So that means more to eat. Mm-hmm. Okay. More so. chicken feet to eat. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me and the rest of your sofrito mm -hmm. and flavorings. Yeah. All so. these spices and everything that you just did, you can do this with a lot of stuff. You can do this with a good cut of chicken. Why couldn't you do this with just chicken strips? <laughs> I do it. 
That's what I'm saying. And I use also chicken legs. Yeah. Chicken breast too. Now that's been cooking, what, maybe 15 minutes, something like that? Yeah, I would say 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. Now I see that they've kind of swollen up and, and they're starting to actually split the skin. So they're, they're, you, you don't want to eat them while they're still hard. You yeah. Want to, you want to soften them Tender, up. Tender, like. So what's the next step? I know we're getting close here. Yeah, because uh, since you see that I um, I was soft on the salt, like uh, I wasn't like a too, too much salt, so this here is going to give bouillon. it. bouillon. Yeah. Gotcha. We call that caldo de pollo. You know, it's chicken. Chicken feet. So this here is gonna give like the last, it's like, the last little bit. Taste. Um, so, what is my tomato paste? I will use this whole uh, color. Gotcha. Okay. So this is just the last steps here. Mm -hmm. And that make this soft, like I mean, um, sauce like a thicker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna just throw that in there. Oh, okay. so that goes in at the last. Yeah. Layer paper, onions again, and. Um, the tomato. Toss it around a little bit. Yeah. So we're gonna leave that there for about five more minutes. Anybody in the right mind who is standing here and smelled what I smell would have no problem trying that. That is amazing. It's so good. I'm not even like bragging, but I. That's really good. It's good. That's almost silly good. If you try with white rice, you will love it <laughs> even more. And like I say, that's what I eat when I was a little. Do I have to rewrite my song now? I think so. I thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. You're very welcome. And I'm thank a you little for bit chicken feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Try some grub you've never tried before. That's How about right. that? You know, we've got a lot of great <laughs> recipes coming up, all kinds of new stuff coming up. Um, hopefully, very soon, it's time for some venison. Yes, it is. You know, we've been putting lambs in the freezer, and we've been putting calves in the mm -hmm. freezer, and all kinds of pig. Right. But you know what? We've kind of stepped back just for a while because I took a break from Kentucky Field. That's right. There's nothing that I ever wanted to do more than hunt or fish. I did it so much that I took a little step back. You have. And I wanted to make sure when I came back, I wanted to really be able to do it. <laughs> And guess what? You're excited, I'm ready. aren't you? I'm yeah, ready. I know you are. I know you're so, ready. So, believe it or not, that was half our show. It was. So, that means we have to say goodbye and uh, let some folks know that we do have a brand new show coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about YouTube. After we air our show on television, we post our shows to YouTube. Don't forget to click subscribe. That way, anytime anything new comes out, you'll be the first to see it. If you wanted a recipe, you want to see us running around like chickens, doing all kinds of fun stuff, where would you go, Ms. Farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Would you? Yes, I still do. Gazillions of recipes there, how-tos. Remember, since our half hour's up, it's all about... Good times. Good friends. And super good eats. You want to plow in there now? I do want to. I'm ready to eat and more. We'll see you next week for a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.